Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Tamar Mizels, and today we're going to talk about the Haredi school system in Israel. Why they don't want to teach their sons secular studies and why is this such a heated topic here in Israel? When I say Haredim, I'm talking about this specific ultra-orthodox community living in Israel, this learning society. Um, that was formed and I explain more about their background and some of the history behind this society in the first episode of the series. So if you didn't watch that, I highly recommend you go watch that video first. So basically only 51% of the men work and the rest of the men are full-time Torah learners. This is an idealistic society where they learn Torah um, full-time. Israel has a mandatory education system from age 3 to age 17. Now the Haredi community have a separate autonomous system not supervised under the state like the regular secular schools or the religious schools that are not Haredim. When it comes to secular studies such as math, English, science, they do not teach their sons. Their daughters, on the other hand, who are in a completely separate school system, boys and girls are not in the same school system, the girls are actually more similar to the regular Israeli system that they do mostly learn math, science, and English like the rest of the schools do. But when it comes to the boys' schools, if at all, they teach it very, very minimally. Girls go to a Beis Yaakov elementary school and then they continue to the seminar where boys are in Talmud Torah where in ninth grade they start yeshiva which they learn Torah full time until they are married and a lot of times even after they're married they continue to study in yeshiva. A very important term here in Israel is liba which means core curriculum. In the beginning of the 2000s, Israel came out with a core curriculum that they wanted for all the elementary schools, basic studies in math, science, English, and Hebrew. Basically what they decided is that the Haredi school system has to be required to teach a certain percentage out of the core curriculum and then to be funded accordingly. Most of the schools, for example, agreed to teach 75% of the curriculum and then to get 75% of the funding. We see that a lot of times they are not really teaching their sons from this core curriculum or very, very minimally. Now, why is this liba, this core curriculum, such a heated topic here in Israel? Because basically by teaching your kids this liba, you're providing your kids with the basic skills they'll need to have a shot out in the real world. So today, like we said, most of them study Torah and then even those who do want to go out and work or go study a profession, there are many barriers. Now in the last episode, we spoke about the legal barrier where in order to avoid going to the army, they are required to sit and learn full time. And another huge barrier is the lack of basic skills and qualifications to learn because they avoid learning the core curriculum. If you are a Haredi and you don't know any English, you're in a pretty closed community where you don't have access to TV and movies, so you're coming and you don't know hardly any English, it's going to be a very big barrier for you to later then go and learn needing these basic skills required. In the next episode, we're going to talk also about a lot of the economic barriers that they have if they want to go out and work and to um, learn in higher education. So a lot of Israelis really care about this because if you're not preparing your kids for the real world, they can be a burden on the state. And this especially matters because of their growth. The Haredi family has the most children in any other sector, about seven per family. And if in 1980 they were 5% of the education system, today they are about 24% of the Jewish school system. And if trends continue as they do in 2060, they are expected to be 30% of the population. For example, now they get to enjoy an amazing healthcare system that's very much subsidized with great healthcare professionals from a lot of the other sectors, but what will happen when 30% of the population is not educated, not doctors, not engineers, we cannot continue to sustain this. So you might be wondering now, why not? Why don't they want to teach their sons 
the core secular studies. So if we were to ask them, there's a few answers that they give. One of the first ones is, is that Torah learning is the most important thing in the world. We want to take young children and give them the best spiritual foundation to raise them to have good deeds and to be Torah people. They will say that they are choosing the spiritual over the material. They prefer that their kid is religious, a good person, as opposed to, you know, materialistically going to have a good profession in the future. Also in the world that they created in the Torah learning society, studying Torah full time is the ideal, is the norm. And if you have to get a profession and learn later on in life, you could do that. But the main focus is the Torah learning. Their way of saying this is that they are afraid. In their community, they shield themselves and their children from the outside world. Now, secular studies has a lot to do with this. You could say the same thing about general education, right? How much do we want to expose our children and at what age to different things? They, in general, are on the more extreme end in sheltering and not exposing their children to different things. If they can view these secular studies as a potential threat to their religious way of life. Exposing their young sons to secular education can lead to different way of thinking and different values that don't go along with their belief system. The most important thing that they want is to have children who continue the Torah way, who do good deeds in the world. And by keeping their young children in the world of Torah till as late as possible is their way to maximize this capability. Another thing they'll say is, we trust our gedolim, our rabbis. The Haredi world have some very big rabbis and they trust them when they make a decision. Every school is approved and overseen by a rabbi and I listen to the rabbis. So if my rabbi approved the school and the gedolim and my Haredi rabbis think that it's best for young children, young boys, not to study secular studies. I trust them. I don't have to, you know, think about this whole topic over and over again. I trust my gedolin to make the decision for me. A lot of times they say, if my son wants later in life to fill in these secular studies and to gain professional skills, he can then easily do it. It's not a problem. They say this a lot because for them, Torah learning means mostly learning Gemara. And when you learn Gemara, you are using a lot of analytical skills that are extremely difficult. So if they're able to do that for so many years, I'm sure it will be easy for them to fill it in later. Now, is this true? Is it really easy for them to fill in the material later? So on one hand, yes, Gemara does develop your cognitive skills and your analytical skills, but that can't replace the years and years of learning math and English and language over time. This can be extremely difficult to fill in, especially if you're already married with some kids uh, later on in life. It's not easy. I do have a friend who said he sometimes watches my YouTube channel, Menachem, who he's an ex Haredi and he easily filled in, you know, he's an electrical engineer today and he filled in everything he had to without ever studying math or English. But that is because he is extremely smart. Now, I don't know if someone else, you know, who's not as brilliant as him, married with children, would be able to do this. So basically, is it possible to fill it in later in life? Yes, definitely. There's some amazing schools that help Choredim, uh, you know, fill in the gaps to help them. Uh, be part of the workforce, but it's really, really not easy for them, which is why even out of the 51% of them that work, only 35% of those jobs required an academic education because it's so hard for them to get it. Like I said, there's amazing programs to help them, you know, through courses or through education to fill in the gaps and to be able to be part of the workforce it comes to Jewish perspective on secular education. Torah learning is a huge focus. It makes us who we are, but at the same time, you are also required to provide for your family. A man is required to teach his son a profession. When we talk about teaching your son a profession and a lot of the rabbis of the Mishnah and the Gemara had professions, we're talking about shoemakers, carpenters, things like that. In more modern days, as science developed, you know, professions today require a lot of secular education 
to be engineers, to be doctors. These require a lot of secular education that didn't really exist in the past. In the past, you know, you learned to trade, you learned a profession, but it didn't uh, require you to learn years and years of secular education. So as these secular studies became more prevalent, then we ask ourselves, how can we combine Torah learning, which is the most important thing to us, together with secular studies? One way to look at it is, practically speaking, today, so that we could have good professions, you are required to you know, learn a lot of secular education, to have a livelihood. So it's something that we need to do on a practical level. Not everyone is meant to be rabbis, so those who are not should get a profession, and in order to do that, they need to study secular study. The other opinion is not only do we need it on a practical level, but in it of itself, learning secular education has a very high value. For example, Maimonides and later the Vilna Goen, they talk about how we need world wisdom, we need to learn about the world in order to understand the Torah. The Rambam says learning about the world, learning sciences and physics helps us understand the world, understand God's greatness. A lot of my rabbis who are more modern, orthodox, Zionist, that they talk about, you know, today we're back living in Israel and part of being a uh, light to the nations is having a strong economy and a strong army and having and providing nicely for our families, having a strong economy, having a strong country. These are very important values and having good and getting a good education. And you know, secular education helps us provide for our families, get good jobs, help the economy. So for most people in my rabbi's opinion, this should be the way to go. Combining the Torah learning together with profession and secular education. So today really we have the secular education system where basically they only teach secular studies. Even when they do teach the Bible or some sort of Torah, they teach it in a westernized secular lens. So they basically put a strong emphasis on secular studies. The Haredi community puts a very strong emphasis on Torah learning and teach their boys very minimal, if at all, secular studies. Regular religious, more modern Zionists like myself, we try in our school system to combine the secular studies together with the Torah study. A lot of times they can criticize us and say, you know, you're teaching Torah sort of like any other subject. You're not giving it a very important emphasis. Of course, the Haredi community do have some that do study secular studies. So there are a lot of different groups, but this is the main picture. Now that we're all back in Israel, I hope we'll be able to find the right balance between the material world, having a very strong economy, and of course, emphasis on the Torah world, which is what defines us and makes us who we are. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. See you next time.